Hi everyone, I'm Flora Posterero. And I'm Carrie Perry. And this is Chick to Chick. about you but one of the things that gets me really excited is planning a trip except it can also be like one of the most uh like frustrating and stressful. aggravating and stressful oh, yeah but you know the idea of planning to go somewhere oh it's just like magical because we just went to visit sam in spain and you know thinking about where we were going to go and what we were going to do was like ah, oh, i just get online and tap away and look at things but then you are faced with the challenges of not only all the people that you're traveling with and yep. booking all of that, but where are you going to stay? How mm -hmm. close is it going to be to everything? You've traveled a lot too, so I, I bet you've had the same kinds of issues. Well, I love to travel more than anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my thing. Uh, you know, I know like some people like to spend money on buying stuff for their house and redecorating. Me, it's travel. I, yeah. I just like to go everywhere and anywhere. And it is so stressful because you're like, okay, uh, do we take the, the late flight or do we get in earlier? But right. if we get in earlier, then you can't get to the hotel. And okay, here's the hotel and how close is it? I right. mean, and you're making all these decisions for everyone else and you wanna make sure everybody's happy. So it's wonderful, it's invigorating, but it's also really stressful. And I'll tell you, I've had some issues with some of these travel websites. Yeah, I saying. don't know if you have, but um, that's the other thing. Like that stuff makes me crazy too. I've tried to book trips sometimes using the travel website and one in particular, I should have known right from the get go when mm -hmm. I made the phone call mm -hmm. and there was a language barrier with the person on the other end. Oh, right. No. I should have known right then and there. And you're talking like one of those major sites it's where a major, it shouldn't major. be that hard to it have a shouldn't. conversation. Right. Oh, that's and frustrating. And it was and that should have been my first like, okay, I'm going to yeah. have problems here. And it was a nightmare from mm. the get-go. Instead of putting the reservation under Flora, it was under Slora. And yeah, That's she my got a new nickname yeah. for you now, Slora. Slora. And your name has to match. Your right. reservation has to match the name on your passport. Especially if you're overseas. That's well, we really were going important. to Mexico. Right. Okay. So that was a nightmare. And then I get the reservation. I see it's wrong. And then I got a call, and it took three hours to correct it. I mean, it was just one thing after the other. Mm. And then the other thing that I really really oh gosh this just I hate this when you're on one of these travel sites and you're booking a package a hotel and a flight together right. and you find the price and then you click that you want to book it and oh all of a sudden the price has gone up by two hundred dollars and right. it says well by the time you made the reservation and now that you're booking it the price has gone up and that aggravates me so much has any of this ever happened to you no, it actually hasn't, which I'm kind of surprised. You're Be lucky. I'm, I am really lucky. I mean, we've we've either stayed with someone where we've gone, or maybe we've gone with a company trip, or I knew where we should go ahead of time because someone recommended it, so I would just call that hotel or call that place. So I think I might have piecemealed it a little bit more. Yeah. But those collective packages, when you were telling me this, I was like, yeah. I didn't know how bad that could be. And listen, people spend a lot of hard earned money and sometimes this is their main vacation and their main trip. If your sole purpose is to go and relax and everything, and then all of that stuff creates so much havoc, like that's stressful. Yeah, what's, it really, what is the point? It really, and I'm thinking, so how did this price go up yeah. by two, $300 in 30 seconds? How does Can that Can you imagine happen? if you're standing in the line at the mall and you're getting ready to check out and you have like a blouse and a pair of pants and whatever. And it's gone up $300. <laughs> because you're standing there holding it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's up $55 since you stood in the beginning of the line. Is that kind of what it's like? Yeah, that's exactly. That's ridiculous. That's a good analogy. All You're right, welcome. so why is all of this happening? And how about we get some expert I advice? I think that's a great idea. All right, our guest today is Jennifer Fagan from Boscov's Travel. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer, Hi. why does this happen when you do these things on these travel websites? Well, um, to speak specifically to what you were speaking about when you said, uh, the price changes. Yes. Uh, that's a marketing thing on their part. They want to get you in, and sometimes they're advertising a low dollar point, some uh, a real 
price perhaps at one time, but it has gone up and it may have gone up just in that moment or it may have gone up a while ago and they're just trying to suck you in. Sometimes it doesn't go up until you look the next time. You've looked at it, you 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 put it away, you go to look at it another time, now the price has gone up. You go look at it another time, the price has gone down. They're they're egging you on to get you to book. They're trying to say, see how volatile this is, you better do something. And in dropping it, they even try to lure you in. I always often encourage people to, if you're going to shop on the online travel agency sites, use um, an incognito browser. Don't use a browser that saves your cookies because then they know exactly what you've been looking at. Hold on. But if wait, you go yeah, in. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Slow your roll. <laughs> you said, I get the. Wait, an there's an incognito, incognito browser, browser. And then you brought food into this subject. <laughs> I said food. Jennifer, talk to cookies. me like I you am said not cookies. in middle cookies. school. Because oh. they know more than we're talking about. You said, Floor and I expressions were like, like what? What? <laughs> what is an incognito browser? Oh. What? We need a tutorial. Please, please explain. <laughs> that went so, right over our heads. Yeah. So for an <laughs> internet, see, and, and again, a good reason to call me. The, the internet browser. <laughs> so we thought we were the talking inter- travel. We're getting a small, like, cookies and incognito you know, browser what? lesson. Okay, okay, Jennifer, go well, ahead. <laughs> and this is probably true for other shopping, so maybe, maybe this will apply across the board. But when you're online shopping, cookies are the things that websites are using to record your activity. So if you go you know, go to a website and or, or they're advertising things to you that you've been looking at, um, if you've ever gone and looked at a, a hotel in Mexico or you've gone and looked at a hotel in, in Jamaica or Florida, Disney World, and then you go onto Facebook and all of a sudden you're seeing advertisements for the things you've been looking at. Well, this is the browsers holding that information and trading it back and forth. If you go onto websites in a browser that doesn't keep that information, Chrome is a platform like Internet Explorer, and it has an incognito feature. And if you go in incognito, then that uh, browser history is not remembered. So do you have to go into your settings? To it's go not the settings. Like, how do you go incognito? Do I put a mustache on? Do I put a hat, sunglasses on? Coat. Like, I don't You'll... get it. <laughs> Listen, I'm so literal, Jennifer. I would have sat there with a scarf over my head, Jackie O glasses. <laughs> And sorry, I'm sure that, that was would a be little a... demented over here, Jennifer. We so, are really sorry fun way to do it, for but sure. true. I, listen, this is a really good point. I didn't know. How do you go incognito? <laughs> I don't get it. Seriously. So if you're in Chrome and you go <laughs> all the way over to the right-hand side of the bar, there's a green arrow, and you press that and drop it down, and you'll see new tab, new window, and then just below that, it says new incognito window. I seriously, and, I'm going to put a, a blonde wig on and sunglasses the next time. <laughs> I'm going to go to your house with a different laptop. I'm going to be so incognito. There you oh, go. Oh, my goodness. Okay, That's so funny. let's talk about the right way and, and, and a good way to be able to enjoy planning your vacation because i mean obviously if we go through someone like you who really does understand this process you can really help so that people can have a really great vacation don't worry about absolutely you know, and, I, and cookies. I, could, I could talk to the points on why using a travel professional is to your benefit a lot of people they're their immediate reason for not contacting someone and for using the internet is, well, the internet's going to be cheaper. Why would I want to pay somebody? Everybody thinks it's going to cost more to use a travel agent. And not only is it not necessarily going to cost you more, it may actually save you money. It will definitely save you time. And in the long run, it's going to increase your value. Uh, We're going to get to know you. The internet does not get to know you. And if you talk to your friends, and I do encourage people to talk to their friends, and they tell you exactly what they should, you know, oh, you should go there, you should do this, you should, this is my itinerary, you should stick to my itinerary. Well, that may be great for their family, but it might not be perfect for you. You may not want to go that fast, or you may want to go faster, you may want to see more things in a day, or maybe you need some downtime. And sometimes, uh, travel professional, consultant, sometimes I think we're therapists, 
we're going to say, but what's right for you all? And a lot of times people don't think about that. People will go online and look at reviews. You have to take reviews with a grain of salt. It's not to say that there aren't some valid reviews out there, but just like in the world of Amazon, the travel community has fake reviews. And you can, you know, believe everything you read or you can take a little bit of the history and looking at it and how much was said and what was specifically said. You can't just look at the numbers because sometimes you'll go in and these terrible reviews for, were for people that never actually went to the resort but were mad because they canceled a trip and didn't get their money back. Well, that could be because they booked through an online travel agency. It would have nothing to do with the resort. The difference between using an online travel agency and speaking with your dollars and using a travel consultant is when an issue arises, we have a history of buying power with the tour operators, with the resorts. You come to us and we say, well, you know, we're a multi-million dollar company that purchases, purchases X number of vacations a year for our clients. So when someone has a problem and it's affected, they're not just affecting that one family. They're affecting their relationship with travel advisors that sell hundreds of trips a year, thousands of trips a year, depending on the size of the organization and how you know we're communicating with one another. So we have buying power. We have a voice when things can sometimes not go well. When someone else's trip doesn't go well, the tour operator that you use may not really care about your dollars. So they lose one customer. They're not thinking about that. So Carrie wants to know what? I want to know what's hot travel-wise. What's hot? What's hot? What's hot? I want to know what's, <laughs> what's hot travel-wise. Exactly, because, you know, not everybody is planning out their trip months and months and months. Some people, you know, they're just kind of frugal and trying to figure out what money they do have, and now they're going, hey, this summer, I'm going to be able to go away. So if people are looking to plan, you know, in the next couple of months, what are some of the great destinations that you think Absolutely. would be good for people? And Anybody with kids, you can't make a decision until the last minute because you don't know who's got to be where, when, yeah, absolutely. Yep, with sports and camps and all that kind of stuff. So while you can plan some things two years out, there are other things that you almost have to wait till the last minute. Um, as far as what's hot, I would love to just say to you, okay, this destination, this destination, it, it's been uh, just about anything. Um, a lot of Europe. Europe is still hot. There are read several articles just recently um, with the tragic fire in, in Paris uh, with the Notre Dame. There's been a lot of talk that that might actually boost um, hmm. travel to that destination. And there's a lot to be said for realizing that, you know, you only have so much time in some instances to see these great places. Um you only get 18 summers with your kids until they're adults. You only get so many opportunities. And when tragedies like that happen, sometimes it's a reminder that we want to see different places. I know my daughter and I were just in Paris last summer. And when that fire happened, we were both just heartbroken. But we had just seen it. And we talked about it. I said, if you'd never been it wouldn't have been such a tragedy for you because you wouldn't have cared. When you go and you connect, you you create that sense of connection and caring about those destinations. And I said, now I just want to see more. And she said, so do I. So you, you just really create that passion for wanting to see these historical and beautiful locations all over the world. So I would say Europe is hot, to, to your point, um, or to your question, Carrie. Um, but so are the resorts. People just want to relax. People work hard all year and they get a little bit of time off and they want to go to an all-inclusive resort in the Caribbean or Mexico and they just want to sit and uh, relax, get some sun, swim, eat great food and not think about anything. They don't want to reach for their wallets and I don't blame them. You've already paid for everything up front. You just want to relax. So Everything is kind of open. Cruises are hot. They're just about whatever interests you. Um, I like that a little bit better because sometimes when a destination is hot, it gets overly run, overrun with tourists, and that doesn't make for a great environment to, to tour in. Well, so, speaking of Europe, 
uh, and, and, and cruises. And cruises. <laughs> you hit two there, Jennifer. Europe and cruises. Um, you guys have asked me to host a cruise, uh, a Mediterranean cruise. So let's give the details very quickly about that. We're running out of time here. And how people, if they're interested in going on this cruise, how they can uh, get more information on that. Absolutely. First of all, they can call any Boskov's office or they can call me directly. Um, I'm sure my information can be made available. Uh, you are going to be taking a group out on the Azamara Pursuit, uh, doing an Adriatic cruise, touching on uh, several Greek islands originating in Athens, also going to Montenegro and Dubrovnik, Croatia, and ending with an overnight in Italy. It's a, a small cruise ship, so you don't have to worry about those crowds that I mentioned. It takes place in September, even a better reason. The weather is still perfect over there, but the crowds have started to die down. And people can get more information by contacting any Boskov's office. Jennifer, thank you so much. Uh, a Good lot stuff. of great information yeah. from Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. My pleasure. <laughs> I love to travel, and I really think the gift of travel when you're making memories with your kids. Oh, right. Priceless. You, know, I, you can say to your child, hey, what did you get for Christmas? And they won't remember. Yeah, chances are it's they nothing that they remember, but the experiences and the trips and the experiences, went. they remember all of that. Agreed. I'm really big on it, and uh, I just, I really love to travel. Yeah. I'm going to travel a little bit more. It was a little harder. I had a lot of active kids. I couldn't get away as much. But that's okay. I got Take plenty them of time out of the now. house. I'm going to have more time. Bye, kids. Yeah. I'm going to go travel. There you go. Yeah, it was good stuff. So what do you think? Um, what kind of topics do you want to hear us talk about? Do you have any comments for us? You can certainly let us know how you feel. Send us an email. Very easy. Chick to chick at penwatch.org. Yeah, we hope we hear from you. That's important. We want to hear what you have to say. We love to hear from people. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we will be back next time to chirp about another topic.